Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and in this video I'm going to talk about why you should never expect a session musician to work on your album for free. I get inquiries to play on people's tracks or albums and to be honest I quite often decline them because a lot of people just want me to do it for free. Um, but I've come to the realization that a lot of people who are asking me to do session work for free are actually new to the music industry and don't quite understand that there's a lot of work involved. So I'm doing this video to basically talk you guys through all the work that's involved doing session work, whether it's guitar or vocals, and hopefully it will give you a deeper understanding. So the first thing that happens when I get asked to do session work is I usually get a demo. Now some demos are really good and polished and some of them are really rough but basically they give you the general idea of what the person is looking for. So from there I establish how much work is going to be involved because if somebody wants me to do say a 20 second solo that is going to be a lot quicker and a lot easier than me doing rhythm and lead for say a five minute song. So really the price that you pay a session musician varies greatly on how much work you are asking them to do. The next thing that happens is that I actually establish what they want me to play on the album and some people have this written in tablature. So a tablature is something that guitar players use to read guitar parts um, and that can be really helpful. So that's one way that I get asked like this is what I want you to do. Another way is sometimes somebody will literally sing over the demo the, the melodies and the things that they want me to play. Sometimes people will actually play on piano what they want me to do on guitar however that can actually take quite a long time because sometimes something that sounds great on piano doesn't always translate well on guitar so sometimes something will you know it'll sound great and then I'll play it exactly the way it should be um, right the correct pitch and everything that's on piano and it doesn't sound quite right so from that point what I usually do is I create three alternatives and I send it to the person who is asking me to do the session work and basically let them choose which one they would like me to do and that actually happens quite often so again this all takes up extra time and bearing in mind I'm talking from the perspective of a session musician who records at home because it is completely different if you are taking them into a studio. But the other way that I get asked um, what to do on a track is that sometimes somebody will actually send me a demo and say, look, I really want guitar on this, but I don't really know what the guitar should be doing. So could you make some guitar stuff up? Please bear in mind that if you ask a musician to do this, you're basically asking them to do a bit of songwriting. So again, some musicians might actually charge you more for that because they are helping you write a different part for the song. So it does take a lot of work to establish what you're going to put on their album. Like I say, there's usually four different means um, of them translating that idea to you. So yeah, that usually takes up a lot of time to work out. Next up is tone. So it's not as easy as just saying clean, overdrive or distortion because there's loads of different tones within those three. And sometimes people will just want one all the way through. So they'll want to say all clean or all distortion. But sometimes you will get people who want to say the bulk of the song in a clean tone and then a little bit of overdrive halfway through. But like I say, there's loads of different tones. It's not just the case of putting clean and then that being it usually what I do is I will come up with say if they want it all on clean um, what I would do is come up with say three or four different clean tones send it over and just say look which one do you think would suit your song the best and then from there they'll give me feedback and sometimes they'll just choose they'll say oh number one or number two or whatever and then other times they'll say actually can it be a blend of say this one and this one so again making sure what tone you have have suits what the person wants. It takes a lot of time so it all is very time consuming and bearing in mind if you get asked to do multiple songs you have to do that for every song and kind of make sure that your tone suits the music that they want to put out there. 
So after I have sorted out whether they want leads or rhythms and the tone, I usually go ahead and do like a test track. So essentially what I do is I play through it how I think it would sound good and then I send it over. And this is where some people don't offer this extra bit of detail, but I usually say, do you like the way it's played? You know, would you like me to do anything different? So would you like me to slide at that point in the solo? Would you like a bend, you know, do you want it to be smooth or very punchy? Um, it's very delicate stuff and so it needs a lot of detail. But like I say, some people will not give you the amount of tracks um, that other musicians do. We all have a different process, but that's what I establish is how do they want me to play it before I perfect it and then do the recording for real. Finally, we get to double tracking. So this is basically where we play the same thing twice. And the reason that we do this is because if we do the guitar part just once, it can sound a little bit limp. So what we do is we double it. Now, the lazy thing to do is just to copy and paste the guitar track, but that doesn't give you the full sound. So essentially what you do is you record it again and you are trying to play it as close to the first one as possible. This can be really difficult, and it really is time consuming, but it's so worth it because it really makes it sound nice and full. So what I normally do is I'll do the first track um, a little bit on the more trebly end. So I'll usually use my bridge pickup for that. And then for the double track, so the second one, I usually put it onto a more mellow sound. So say in between the two pickups or even on my neck pickup. And basically what you do after that is you can send them to the artist and their engineer will essentially um, mix them together and it just gives them more options over the tone and it makes it sound really nice and full. Not only do our session musicians have, um, basically we need to be paid for our time and all the work, but also we have a lot of expensive equipment to be able to do the job. So I have loads of guitars, I have different amps, I also have different amp models and recording equipment um, and interfaces and things like that. And that is expensive. Um, and people kind of factor that out because they don't necessarily think about it when they're asking you to do it for free, but it is expensive. And the easiest way to kind of think of this um, is so like if you have a car and it breaks down, if you take it to a garage, you would expect to pay the mechanic for the work that they've done. So if you're asking somebody to play on an album, you should be paying them for playing on the album because asking a session musician to work for free would be like going to a garage and saying, look, can you fix my car? I know you have, you know, you're very highly skilled and you usually get paid a lot for your job and all the equipment that you're going to use to fix my car is expensive. But could you do my car for free, please? Please, I'll give you a shout out on social media. That is basically what it's like when somebody asks a session musician to work for free. What we do is a very high skill, it's very time consuming, and the equipment that we use is very expensive. So the same way that you wouldn't expect a mechanic to fix your car for free, you shouldn't be asking a session musician to work for free either. If you are working with your friends, you know, and they offer to do the work for free, that's that's totally cool, you know, that's on them. But if you are asking somebody to play on your album or your track, please don't expect them to do it for free. So how do we go about the very touchy subject of a fee? Well, the best thing to do is to email the person who you want to work with you, let them know all the work that they would need to do and basically leave the ball on their court. Just ask them, you know, this is what I'd like you to do. What would your fee be? If you have a budget, so let's say you have a record company that's giving you some money or if you have a GoFundMe, please let us know because a lot of us musicians are very reasonable and we will work with you on that. If you have a very low budget, there are a lot of session musicians who will do it a little bit cheaper than they normally would just to help you out. But it's just being honest and just being kind with people um, and not expecting too much for too little. So like I say, the best thing to do is just let people know if you have a budget and also let them come to you with a fee because you are asking them to do it. You know, they're not asking to be on your album. You are asking them. So they have to calculate, right, okay, so they want me to do this, this and this. That's roughly gonna take this much time. Um, so it, it really does leave the ball in their court so they can give the best price that suits you both. 
So for that being said, I really hope I managed to shed some light on the subject and create a deeper understanding on why session musicians deserve to be paid. If you would like me to do guitar or vocals on your track or an album, please let me know in an email at lisareguitarist at hotmail.com and we can sort something out. So yeah, until next time, I will hopefully see you guys in the next video.